It is, it's a kind of been a slow week. I mean, I, I mean, I, that's good, right? Yeah. I mean, you know, you get a little tired about the latest bull Nine. Elon's doing. Yeah. Like Jesus, like exhausted to the point of like, you know, yeah. he's, he's, what's he over there doing? He's sticking his Nine. can of peanut butter while singing the national anthem. Cool. Awesome. Have, cool. have fun. Yeah. That's, that's cool. Cool. Yeah, Isn't you know. it? Does it does it worry you a little how desensitized we are to bullshit Nine. like that at this point? Well, no. Like, oh yeah, there's there's a guy running for president just straight up doing Nazi salutes. Yeah, all right. Well, no. That's Tuesday. It's called trauma, so I don't have to worry about it. Yeah. But we're all just, you know, we're a little desensitized to bullshit. Nine. A li little, little, little sometimes. More than a little. Yeah. If you happen to be in the Northwest, uh, no, or not no. Northeast, Northeast of the, of the United States, um, this week, uh, Hurricane, there is a gigantic mother <laughs> Hurricane Lee is, uh, kind of pointing your direction. When I first saw it, it was like, it was coming straight for us. I was like, uh oh. And it's like, no, it's going to hit this trough of, of, pressure and weather terms and stuff and it's going to go whoop, and it's going to head it's heading what it looks like right now it's heading for like new england slash new brunswick so that general area yeah. is just going to get kablam so like half my family is is kablamo my nephew at college in connecticut we didn't, we didn't cool. used to have, like, I remember literally, I remember 10 years ago with F Sandy, Nine. we were all like, this is weird, right? And now like hurricanes are coming for like F New York, Nine. like, oh, okay, again. All right. That's fine. I, I mean, guess. New York, like, I remember when I was a kid, Hurricane Gloria hit us pretty hard, but that was an anomaly. Like that was a big deal. And I knew like the New York area does get hurricanes, but usually they're pretty burned out. Yeah. No, no. Like usually they're down to like a cat one by the time they get up to New York, but not anymore, man. Can I, can I just say, I'm, I'm just, I'm sitting here going, I'm glad it's not me. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's valid. It's horrible because people in, people in Canada are not prepared for this. Nine. They're too polite for hurricanes. Well, all summer, like Europe has had insane heat all yeah. summer in the hundreds europe doesn't usually have that so they air conditioning is not standard in a lot of places in europe what is this air conditioning of which you speak i do not know this they've thing. never yes. needed it what is this they think we're crazy in america with yeah. our air conditioning and everything they're like open a damn window but who's crazy now yeah we are we still are we still are. all right yeah. It's still, it's still, us. still us. Okay. So we have one, I, the, the, we have one this week that, um, I think I, just discussing it makes me feel unpleasant. So I have to share these unpleasant feelings. It's like, does this milk smell bad to you? <laughs> yes. Only much, much worse. Um, I, I don't, and I don't say this quite enough on the live show, but Catherine, thank you for all the work you do to get these stories for us and whatnot. And, yes, and all you folks. Absolutely. Well, I should say thank you, but maybe not thank you. It, but it's, you it's, are not sneaky. It's, <laughs> it's like, no. Nope. I know you think you're sneaky, just stretching one little paw onto my keyboard, but I'm going to push them you buttons. Are, you are an orange furry battering ram, my dude. It is. All right. Let's I love it. you so much. You are never going to be a ninja. <laughs> let's get the intro going. Each week, Catherine, the Radio Dead Air audience, go on the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff. Bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong? Um, where are we starting? Florida. This fucking guy. Of course. Everyone sent me this story. And I think, oh, I don't have the, the thing on the screen. Oh, well, screw it. 
we can go without the intro shot this week. It's it's I don't care. Everyone sent me this one. Just because and I understand why. It's not just that it's stupid. It's that it's very intentional. There there is engineering involved in this shit. This this is like this is like his raison d'etre. Why does Reza Ray Bellucci keep trying to cross the Atlantic Ocean in a hamster wheel? That's not because a riddle. He wants to die. While the U.S. Coast Guard was making preparations for Hurricane Franklin last month, they spotted a surprising water watercraft off the Georgia South Carolina coast. A giant hamster wheel. With a Florida man inside. Not just a man. A Florida man. A Florida man. He's different. It's a whole different species. Look at this thing he has could just built. There's welding in this shit, for fuck's sake. Reza Ray Bellucci, an ultra marathon runner. I don't know what an ultra marathon is. It scares me. Told them he was attempting to run across the Atlantic Ocean to London. It wasn't his first bizarre stunt. It wasn't even his first hamster wheel. Lucci was rested in 2021 when he floated ashore in the hammock area of Flagler County after trying to run to New York in what he called a hydropod bubble. He also made attempts to run around the Bermuda Triangle in 2014 and 2016. He received a civil penalty of 10 grand from the Coast Guard. This time he's facing criminal charges after he resisted the Coast Guard's effort to collect him threatened to kill himself with a 12-inch knife, and then threatened to blow himself up. Both of which would be easier than the hamster wheel, bro. It, if you're trying to die. Like, we took a turn. ways. We took a fucking turn with this story. Like, it's like, oh, there's a guy in a hamster wheel. He's gonna what? He's, he's threatening to what? Is that thing My a bomb? is like, does he have anywhere to keep supplies in that thing? Because you are going to need to eat and drink water. I don't know if it is or not. Uh, At some point, you will need to expel waste. After the Coast Guard but approached the vessel 70 miles off the coast of Tybee Island, Georgia, I used to live there, and 60 miles from uh, Georgetown, South Carolina, to end a manifestly unsafe voyage, Bellucci first threatened to kill himself with a 12-inch knife. That's not a knife. This is a knife. Uh, according to the criminal complaint, next day he reportedly threatened to blow himself up, and officers observed him holding wires. Did this man build a giant human hamster wheel that was also a bomb? Did that have... Did Apparently not, but the U.S. Navy Explosive Ordnance Disposal Unit was called in to help determine a potential blast radius. But Bellucci admitted the next day he made it up. Can you imagine? You are in the Navy. You are trained to deal with things that explode. And they say, we have a situation, sir. We need you to come in. Check this out. And you're like, well, what's okay? What's, sir, ma'am, whichever. Uh, everyone can be humiliated this equally. We're going to bring you in. You sit you down at your station. You're like, here, we go. all right. We need you to analyze this device for the potential blast radius. The fuck am I looking at? It's a human hamster wheel. What? what? <laughs> like eight years training in the U.S. Navy, millions of dollars spent to make sure you can understand how things explode. And it's a human hamster wheel on the fucking screen with this joker. And the fuck? You'd be sitting there going like, y'all fucking with me, right? Right? This is, this, this is a joke, right? This is, is this like some Marine Corps shit? <laughs> is the fucking... It took what five... What wrong? It took five days before Bellucci was finally brought ashore where he faces federal charges of obstruction uh, of a boarding and violation of a captain of the port order. <clears throat> motherfucker his I don't know if it's a YouTube or a TikTok but it's SS Captain Bubble they could have been 
and keep in mind they were making hurricane preparations at the time how many resources going toward actual life-saving shit did fuck nut here get in the way of what there's a there, there's a paragraph that we could, <clears throat> let me just let me okay. just which one yeah let me just read this to y'all uh-huh Luchi, 52, of Boca Raton, is a man with a mission. Born in Iran and trained as a mechanic, he says he was whipped, branded, and hung from a tree by his wrist for breaking rules such as eating during Ramadan and wearing a Michael Jackson t-shirt. This shit just keeps getting weirder, man. Hey, babe, babe <sighs> you need... I feel for you. You need, you need therapy, not a hamster wheel. Right, right? You need a safe space to deal with your issues. You don't need to get Maybe the Coast Guard involved. Maybe a hug. Yeah. Like shit, when I'm having issues, the worst thing I do is I fuck around my computer. I don't make a giant human hamster. What the fuck? Boy needs a hobby. Money. This must have cost. Um, let me just, let's see. If that's aluminum, which it probably is because steel don't float. So that's aluminum. Uh, that's a lot. That that's at least just looking at the the amount of aluminum right there. That's at least a couple Aluchi's thousand dollars. Aluchi's hydropod <clears throat> is a ten foot by six foot wheel of three millimeter thick plastic around an aluminum frame with buoys and flotation devices. There is no motor. Yeah, that shit ain't cheap. Like every the price of aluminum right now, nah, that shit ain't cheap. Well. <sighs> As if we don't have enough people causing bullshit. You have to admire at least the, the determination of this next fella. Um, is, this is like, you know, Tom Petty, well, I won't back down. <laughs> Robbery suspect to evading capture by vehicle, bike, sailboat, and kayak arrested. That that already has me thinking of that old joke, like the guy in the hurricane. Yeah, said a boat. The said, cops come to the rescue him, and he's yeah. like, "No, God's gonna save me." And then a guy, it's things start to flood, and people in a boat come by. No, 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 God's gonna save me. And then he's sitting on his roof because his whole house is flooded, and they come in a helicopter, and he's like, "No, God's gonna save me." And then he dies, and he gets to heaven, and he's like, "God, why didn't you save me?" And he's like, "Are you kidding me? I sent a fire truck. I sent a boat. I sent a helicopter." <laughs> A Vermont armed robbery suspect who police say eluded capture in the past week in a vehicle, on a stolen bike, on foot, and in a stolen sailboat was arrested Thursday after he was spotted in a kayak on a river. Eric Edson, 52, was wanted accusations of robbery of a store in Burlington on August 24th, impeding and assaulting two police officers and the theft of a sailboat and vehicles. Plural. Not, not cars, not automobiles vehicles because the unusualness of mr edson's various modes of flight from cars to bikes to paddle boats to sailboats to tractors it's easy to lose sight of the fact that mr edson is a dangerous person how the fuck fast can you go on a paddleboard burlington police uh responded to a man passed out in a running vehicle that matched the description of one used in a robbery a week before when officers roused them, he fled at a high rate of speed, assaulting both officers with the vehicle. That evening, he fled police on foot and then on a stolen bicycle before stealing a sailboat on Lake Champlain. I want to point out, there's a thing about lakes. They're self-contained. They're, they're finite. If you go out and try to escape someone on a lake, what they have to do is wait. They, they, this just, they sit, they wait, and, and you're done. That evening, he, uh, uh, Edson was intercepted by the Coast Guard, but after the sailboat ran aground at the base of Lakeside Cliffs, he fled, received a tip on Thursday. He was spotted in a kayak on the Lamaliel River in Georgia, Vermont, about 21 miles from Bur Burlington. Edson landed the kayak, ran away, and then jumped in the river and swam to the southern shore, 
where he was arrested by troopers and game wardens. And was taken to the hospital for evaluations, injuries from being on the run. Have you ever heard of Greyhound, bro? <laughs> it's affordable. It'll get you where you're going. 21 miles in a day ain't good. I'm just saying. That's not what we can call efficient. I guess good try there, Frodo. Since they <laughs> caught up to your kayak. <laughs> it's a decathlon. Yes, computer wrote it. <laughs> like, Jesus fucking Christ. It's like race for your life, Charlie Brown. What the shit? This season of The Amazing Race has gotten weird. <laughs> that is like 52. Look, that's a lot of effort for 52. Yeah. I would be very tired. The hamster wheel guy was 52 too. Maybe I need more cardio or some shit. I don't know. I'm Maybe not even in my need more math. I'm not even in my fifties yet, and I'm sitting here going, "That's exhausting me." Uh, just we, thinking about that. We, we just we don't do enough math. Oh well, yeah. All right, this next one. <sighs> we have had fights in Chuck E. Cheese in the walmart we have had black friday nights we have had fights in every conceivable place at i think did we have one at like a kids little league or some shit someone in the Thank channel will you, know yeah. this is a first and just envisioning how it would go down I, every single moment of it is making me go oh no oh no Tara, we go. Women threw bowling balls during brawl in East Long Meadow. Damn. I know, right? Ten. Oh, Mass <clears throat> yeah, they don't fuck around. It's Massachusetts. Ten to fifteen people fighting, chairs and bowling balls being thrown through the air. Absolute chaos, dogs and cats living together. This is how police described a large scale brawl that broke out at a bowling alley in East Longmeadow late Friday and ended with multiple individuals being arrested. Police responded shortly after 10 20 p.m. to a report of several people fighting inside the Shaker Bowling Alley, uh, which offers regular bowling and not candle pin bowling. Why was that necessary to, to point that out? Word count. <laughs> Officer Zachary uh, Paremba was the first to arrive at the scene, described it as reported as absolute chaos. Paremba quickly restrained and handcuffed two different women who we allegedly saw raise bowling balls over their heads to throw at others. Officer Nicholas Osman arrived at the bowling alley shortly after and detained another woman who he described as being, quote, an active aggressor in the fight. Officer spoke with multiple wit witnesses and arrested three Springfield women Ages 19, 19, and 21 on multiple charges, including assault and battery with a dangerous weapon and disorderly conduct. Uh, force was, first responders evaluated multiple people for injuries, but ultimately there were no serious wounds found on anyone, which is a fucking miracle. Because these, these people, what? I think I know what happened here. Okay. They found out Chris Evans got married. And the girls just lost their shit. Either that or they're making a really weird Big Lebowski six sequel. <laughs> Over the line. This isn't Nob, there are rules. <laughs> <laughs> like, fuck's sake. We're talking like 10, 15, 20 pound. Fucking yeah! I am amazed no one is dead. This could have yeah, been you a could, you could fucking kill somebody. This could have been a very different story if just one person their skull had collided with a fucking bowling ball. This could have been a very different thing. But good 
God, I can't cool it, man. They're calling the cops. I'm telling you, though, man, Massachusetts women. <laughs> I have some very good friends in Massachusetts. I was in one of their bridal parties. And at the bachelorette, we were all doing like a pub crawl, right? She had her little tiara that said bride. And we, we you know, we all got pretty fucked up. <laughs> we weren't driving. We had someone driving us. She didn't notice her little tiara fell off while we were waiting for our, our ride to come. And some drunk ass dude picked it up and started walking off with it. And that's when she noticed she was in that dude's face so fast. Every swear you can imagine coming out of her mouth. You stole my fucking tiara. This is my bachelorette. And like the whole bridal party, like we stand up because we're like, we're in a fight now. <laughs> We're going to have to kill this man <laughs> over a plastic tiara. That's just how it is. Like, we're fucking ride or die. And he gave it back and sort of stumbled off. But uh, uh, Massachusetts girls do not play. I mean, I'm like, Jesus Christ. Just sitting here, you get to a point in your life, you're responsible for something. Even if you're not an owner, you still rental. You are responsible for things. I'm sitting here imagining the kind of damage, not just to people, but to property, a fucking bowling ball. I could just imagine the manager, manager of that place was just sitting there, like just his soul slowly leaving their body, just like. And like, does your, does your property insurance cover crazy people? <laughs> It, if you're in, it, I guess it like Florida, it's the flood insurance and in LA, it's the earthquake insurance. And in Massachusetts, it's the fucking knockdown fight. Fucking it's, it's, it's brawl insurance. It's yeah. a brawl insurance. Yeah. No. It's just, no, you can't be on my, you have your own keyboard. Come on, dude. All right. Lick your butt. We call it the goodwill hunting insurance. Um, there you go. There you go. <laughs> Next up, speaking of Florida, speaking of hurricanes, I didn't even mean to segue into it, but it happened. Oh, y'all are going to hell in this story. Yeah, it's Clearwater. I, this is Clearwater, Tampa. Yeah, I lived here. Shit. Oh, y'all going to hell. There's a thing. I, I know a lot of people are like, ah, it's no big deal. But here in the South, we have had enough hurricanes that we take that shit seriously. And we do not fuck around when one is coming straight toward us. This, this just, I saw this and my blood fucking boiled. Clearwater, oh yeah, was, Clearwater Beach Hyatt ignored Idalia evacuation order, misinformed guest. As Hotel Idalia made landfall north of Tampa Bay early Wednesday, most hotels on Clearwater Beach were empty. Pendleton County had issued an evacuation order two days earlier for Zone A, which directed all guests and residents to leave the Barrier Island. But the 286-room Hyatt Regency Clearwater Beach Resort and Spa stayed open, sending emails to guests and sliding notices under their door with false information. Quote, we have not been ordered to evacuate Clearwater Beach. The investor said adding the resort and the restaurants would remain open. Resort slid letters under doors around 5 p.m. Four hours after Pinellas County announced the evacuation order would take effect at 7 p.m. that night. As high visitors lingered on the beach Tuesday morning before the storm, several were not aware the Barrier Islands were under an evacuation order until informed by a Times reporter. What the fuck? Here's the thing. If all your guests die, they're not paying their bill. Like this, this is the dude is making a bet here. He's like, well, number one, we don't want the people to leave before, you know, they pay. We want them to want, we want another night out of them. And number two, we'll be the only hotel open. Jesus. Hey, hey, either, either we're going to make a fuckload of money. Or a fuckload of people are going to die. So it's a 50 50. 
Let's chance it. Fuckload of money. Huh? Huh? Fuckload. Fuckload of money. No, this is the point. My also, manager. It, in huh? this day and age, who, who in this <sighs> day and age, when we have like all of human knowledge in our pocket, literally, knows that there's a hurricane on the way and isn't checking you would for their be, goddamn self? You would be amazed. Era. Like who's Dude. relying on the hotel to tell them what to do? I'd be checking not that site anymore, but I'd be checking something pretty regularly You'd to find out. You would be absolutely stunned how many people don't keep track. You know, us being on social media, we are actually the weird one. We are actually a minority. Um Oh yeah, small lawsuit. Yeah, 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 yeah. This, this is yeah. This is entirely lawsuit. Yeah, everybody in the channel is like, "Well, if I got a lawsuit, this is depraved indifference." You can definitely prove that. What I'm amazed well, at is hmm? here's the question. Yeah, Florida passed some weird fucking laws to get out of like mask mandates, right? Mm -hmm. Public <laughs> safety is not really like a priority. Well, maybe not for like the law, but for 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 oh, yeah. civil court. Oh yeah, you you could. Oh yeah, remember remember Florida is where uh, where Hulk Hogan and Peter Thiel destroyed Gawker. I mean, mind you, they didn't help the fucking the 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 testimony for fucking idiots. But no, they were assholes. Yeah. They did not help themselves at all. But that's yeah. Still, I can't. I can't imagine that somebody didn't like, um, boss. We're closing, right? No, we're making money. Okay, hello, police. Well, and that's the other thing. All those employees, all those hotel employees, were uh -huh. told, probably told, like, you can evacuate, but you won't have a job to come back to. You have to work. Yeah, they do that shit. That is, if you're not in America, that's perfectly legal. If we have an um yeah. an emergency with this with a city ordered evacuation, like they're saying you must leave, you can get fired for leaving, for not yeah. showing up for work, even with a fucking hurricane barreling down on you. I can't tell you how many times when I was working at the mall in Connecticut, like the governor would have closed the roads because of snow to everyone but emergency vehicles. Mm -hmm. But my fucking mall job would be like, no, your ass better be here. This is why we're rediscovering unions right now. Okay, next one. <laughs> this this fucking guy. That's all I can say about this. Jesus Christ. Man uses hedge clippers to clip off ankle monitor at local Ace Hardware. <laughs> Ashtabula, Ohio. Ankle bracelets are one way that authorities keep track of movements of lawbreakers and on occasion suspects try to remove the GPS device. Surveillance cameras were recording on Tuesday when an offender used a trip to the Ace Hardware store in Ashtabula to ditch his electronic tether. Security video shows the man was wandering around the store. He was then approached by an employee. He told her he was looking for hedge clippers and after getting a pair of clippers, Walked just out of sight of the surveillance camera. A short time later, he placed a small black item on a shelf, shelf in aisle one. He then grabbed a bag of free popcorn, walked out the door, and was last seen grabbing a backpack and riding away on a bicycle. <laughs> the fucking audacity of this guy. He didn't steal anything. He didn't, but okay. He didn't even pay for the hedge clippers. He was like, well, no, but he didn't leave him either. He left him there. Shit, but that's kind of ratchet, man. He's like, well, I need to get this thing off my leg. I know. I'll just get this, get one from the store, and then put it back on the shelf. I, mm, I know, I know a lot of women <laughs> who will buy a dress for like a wedding or something and just not cut off the tags. <laughs> And return that shit the next day. Yes, but Tara, he did cut off the tag. That's the whole problem. 
I know, but at least like he didn't take it home and then return it, you know? Maybe he thought it was an out of the way spot. Maybe he thought he'd come in and we have hedge clippers. The other stores in the deposit do not have them. We were like the helpful hardware folks with the hedge clippers. Yes, we were. <laughs> That's the store manager, Sarah. Cheryl Hatcher. Bless your heart. Uh, oh, this now, is. Now, the dumb part is you should have bought them and taken them home because when you're in public, you're always on camera. When the employees called Ashtabula police, they were told it was not a police matter. Yeah, can we write someone a ticket? No? Fuck, you're on your own. Like, they wouldn't even like, okay, hold on, we'll call the parole boards. Like, nah, fuck off, figure right. it out. That's when they, they just, just like, not our fucking problem. That's when they decided to call the number listed on the ankle bracelet, which connected them with the Ohio Adult Parole Authority. Oh, shut up. Shut up, phone. Just, can you just imagine that? Well, what do we do? Let's call the number on the ankle bracelet. This is literally how Return of the Living Dead started. They called, they let out a, a fucking corpse and they called the, the, the number on the barrel that the corpse was in. They had to call the Of course, they got nuked for it, but you know. Wait, I think I saw that movie. Yeah. Is that the one where there's a bunch of goths and then like one totally normal girl? Yeah, maybe. Who hangs out with all the goths. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. yeah. But anyway. I think I did actually see that movie. Back Hatcher and employees believe being the helpful hardware folks by reporting the suspect's actions. Quote, so he can hopefully turn his life around and do the right thing. There are plenty of places in town that will help people that need help. Bless Aww. your heart, sweetie. Bless your heart. I just, I love the sheer audacity of the motherfucker. For real. <laughs> and then the cops are like, it's that easy to get off, though. It's just like, well, it has to be comfortable to wear. So they can't use metal. They use like metal uh, bands, but not all metal. It's mostly plastic, just so that, you know, you can wear it. But you can cut through that shit fairly easily. Of course, when you do, you break the circuit and it says it's been cut open. But just love that the but cops are thing. like, the cops just like, not our job. Not our job. But also, like, you took off on a bike. <laughs> like, if it's going to alert them the second you cut it, maybe a getaway car. A car? Call an Uber or some so shit. You can be a little further away. By the time they come looking for you. Did it say what this guy w was charged with? Let me see. Um, I don't believe it said what this guy was charged with. Which could be any number of things. Yeah. Could potentially be really bad or just like, yeah. Well, I mean, if, if they let him out on a bracelet, probably not anything too fucking terrifying. They tend to keep those people. I'm just saying, like, if you got your axe murderers and shit, like, you know. All right. I'm not saying he's a good guy. I'm just saying. We're on the last one, and... Uh -oh. I don't say this lightly. Some people need Jesus. You you have gone, some my my friend, sir. I will say sir because the person in question is in his sixties. You have gone down a dark path, a dark path. There you go. There you go. Man indicted for allegedly breaking into Clarkson daycare, pretending to be quote baby Danielle. As upsetting as that is, can I just point out the, the call letters for this station? W-H-A-M, yes. William. A man from uh, Holly was, has been in, is it H-O-L-L-E-Y, Holly? I guess so. I don't, it's not Holly, it it's here. Holly, yeah, I guess. Has been indicted on burglary charge for allegedly entering a Clarkson daycare center on a handful of occasions. 
stealing diapers, formula, and leaving behind some bizarre notes earlier this year. Daniel Sealer, now 66, was arrested on February 18th after he was allegedly caught by deputies running out of Inspire Learning and Childcare on Lake Road. He's accused of leaving money and handwritten notes on three separate occasions less than a month prior, asking the staff for adult-sized diapers, properly sized bras and dresses for himself and more, indicating that he liked to play as a baby girl while calling himself Baby Danielle. Center's director also reportedly saw surveillance video showing Sealer piecing several diapers together to make a bigger one before putting it on and running out of the building. That's not going to work. A spry for an older fella. Listen, have your kink, all right? If you're a 66 year old man that wants to be a baby girl, that's that's not the problem. Fine. That's not the fucking problem. But it's not the daycare's job to facilitate that for you. You are creeping everybody the fuck out. Not because of whatever your fucking kink is, although, you know, sharing it with people unbidden kind of is a little creepy. But leaving the fucking notes, it's like, are we going to get axe murdered? And like requesting shit. Like, that's not their job. Like, this is like... Th this... There are actually specific places where that is their job. And you should find them. This feels like the lead up to an 80s slasher movie. Yeah. It really does. Like, you know, like, like the, back in the 80s, when we had slasher movies, at, like, every fucking holiday had one. There was like fucking Leprechaun and, and fucking uh, Silent Night, Deadly Night. There was a fucking, you know, the, I, I bet there was an Easter Bunny one. The, the idea that this guy, like, you're getting these weird, creepy notes. You're like, this guy's going to show up dressed as a baby girl and fucking start taking people's heads off with an axe. Because that's that's what you think. That, that, that just would freak me. The literal, just What in the hell? What in the holy hell? A little bit like Chucky meets whatever happened to baby Jane. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. The same right. Because your kink is okay. Yes. As long as, like, you don't involve people that don't want to be involved. Like, this, this is some unbidden shit. This is, this, like, specifically, like, children. Like, you were, like, seriously, this far away to being on a special list for the rest of your life. Oh, he probably is on a special list for the rest of his life. Like, I... Well, his daycare is like below school age. Well, th children. This is a burglary charge. That's all he's been charged with. So he hasn't been charged with any of the ones that, you know, would put you on the list forever. But had he timed it yeah. differently, he would have been on the list forever. Yeah. This Critters 2 count, Easter Bunny horror movie. You're not, yeah, Critters 2 was an Easter horror movie, kind of, a little bit. Um, there, I particularly want one called Beaster Day. Good, good one. I, yai, 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 motherfucker! I, I felt like I was reading this, and like parts of me were like, "Oh God, this." So just like the fucking entitlement. I have a kink, so I am owed free shit. Man, fuck you. This you is... know how much money furries spend on those outfits? Go fuck yourself. They put a lot of work in. Buy your own They're... fucking diapers. Right? Like, making requests. That's the part that would be like, uh, do we, do we buy them? What are we doing here? I'm, I'm scared. Like, just the like subtle the menace. on you. Huh? The ball's on you. The ball. Just expecting <sighs> free shit. Just the subtle menace in the notes. It's like. Yeah. 66, man. Well, at least he's staying active. I guess. Sure. That's... I wonder if there's an AARP discount on like. 
fetish material. If there isn't, there should be. That would fucking sell like gangbusters. Yeah. Just... I mean, that might help the villages an awful lot. <laughs> down, in, down in Florida. If you could get an AARP discount on, like, condoms. I just, I fucking. This shit would haunt me. This is fucking literally haunting. This is why we have a shortage of teachers. <laughs> it's like this shit. Like, Entitled uh, parents, school shootings, and just this sh like Oh, he it, when parents find out about this shit, someone is coming for him. Like if if you found out this was someone was doing this where you they you sent your kid, at the, the very least he's getting sued. The very least. If somebody was doing this at a place I boarded my cats. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, so, that's what I mean. Like your well, kink is okay. No kids. We learned this week. You can share your kink. Consent is key. There is a time and place. You can't just inflict them on very, people. And if inflicting yeah, your kinks on important. people is your kink, it's not a kink. It's an issue. You need to talk to somebody. Right. We have learned. Ted Cruz. Well, what? Ted Cruz. Ted Cruz. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have learned that. Uh, if you're going to cut off your ankle monitor, at least have the common courtesy to pay for the hedge clipper. <laughs> you cheap or motherfucker. Or do it off camera. We do it on camera. We've learned that uh, even a hurricane with the risk of life and limb, somebody's still going to go, but we could make a lot of money. America. America. We have learned that of brawls, potentially a bowling alley brawl is one of the worst possible. Yeah. I'm amazed ain't nobody dead. God dang. Um, we've learned if you're trying to flee from police, like, pick a fast means of exit and stick with one. Don't be, like, indecisive on this shit. Also, like, the sailboat seems needlessly complicated. Fucking imagine that guy out there singing Crosby Stills and Nash just going, When you see the Southern Cross, sir, get out of the boat! There's, like, ropes and stuff you gotta worry about on a sailboat. Too much work. And finally, we've learned... If you have trauma to work through, yes, a hobby could help you. Not one that involves the Coast Guard and the Navy. Yeah. They have better things. Also, to threatening to blow yourself up is almost never going to solve a problem. Yeah, because like half the time, some of the people there will go, okay, sure. Less paperwork for us, yeah. Bye. 